Ye, for the past twelve years, I've cherished a harmonious marriage. We were that enviable couple who captivated attention upon entering a room, embodying fitness, love, and unity. Our routine was intertwined, exercising at the same gym, sharing meals, and supposedly, every secret. However, a revelation last week drastically altered my life story. My gym companion, Mike, unexpectedly reached out. Known for his integrity, his warning was not to be taken lightly. He cautioned me about suspicious dynamics at the gym involving my wife, Claire, and Rick, a known charmer. Initially, I dismissed the idea VDJ Claire and I were solid, or so I believed. But Mike's observations of their interactions, particularly on Thursdays when my work kept me late, raised alarms. Against my principles, I delved into Claire's phone, uncovering conversations within a hidden app that confirmed my worst fears. They had orchestrated a secret rendezvous on an upcoming Thursday, planning to leave the gym separately and meet clandestinely at a nearby hotel. Reading their exchange was excruciating, a betrayal that cut deep. Yet amidst the turmoil, a calm resolve enveloped me. Rather than succumbing to victimhood, I prepared to confront the betrayal head-on. The evidence on Claire's phone, glaring in the darkness, solidified my determination to address the deceit. The notion of inaction was unacceptable. I was compelled to disrupt their scheme decisively. While my exact course of action remained uncertain, my intent was clear, to confront the betrayal without allowing myself to be demeaned. This was a battle of principles, demanding a response that was both strategic and just. My stance was not about revenge, but about asserting dignity in the face of profound disloyalty. In the quiet of the night, with Claire unaware beside me, I contemplated my next steps. The betrayal would not go unanswered. My resolution to act was not born of malice, but from a profound sense of betrayal and the need for accountability. As I devise my plan, the path ahead is uncertain, but my resolve is unwavering. I am determined to navigate this challenge with dignity and purpose. I must devise a plan, ensuring each piece aligns flawlessly. The end game is only reached with the final move, and I intend to make it. In what might be seen as my bleakest moment, I find an opportunity to ascend, to reclaim the esteem and self-worth that was compromised. The battleground is prepared, fates die cast, and my wife will soon understand that this Thursday will be etched in their memories forever. Here I stand, wronged, a spouse deceived, yet far from vanquished. So what happened next? Next was that Thursday VDJ, the moment I ceased to be merely an observer in my life's narrative and seized control. Here's the account. I arranged for trusted colleagues to cover my duties, enabling an early departure from work, breaking my usual late Thursday schedule. This set the stage for a covert encounter destined to alter my marriage's course. And Rick's too, unbeknownst to him, wasn't the bachelor he claimed. He had a wife, as in the dark about his wanderings as I was. The chessboard was ready, and it was time for my play. A phone call to Rick's unsuspecting wife initiated the endgame. I'll spare you the details of our conversation for now. Fast forward to Thursday night. Informed by Mike, I was aware of Rick's departure time. My heart thundered as I stationed myself opposite the hotel, watching, waiting. Soon after Rick's entry, another vehicle arrived, VDJ his wife, Sarah. We convened in a secluded spot, the quiet before the storm. As Claire entered, my greeting stunned her into a statuesque silence, her expression one of sheer disbelief. Her brief hope, thinking perhaps I was there with another, vanished as I introduced her to Sarah. In the wake of my revelation, Sarah's face fell into despair, immediately offering apologies for her unintended role in this sordid affair. Yet I dismissed her apology with a mere wave, focusing instead on Claire, whose silence spoke volumes. Pressured by the mounting tension and Sarah's impending emotional collapse, I demanded the hotel room number with unwavering firmness. Claire, finally breaking her silence under the weight of our collective stare, revealed it to be room 413. As we prepared to part, I insisted on taking Claire's phone, a request she initially resisted but eventually complied with after meeting my stern gaze. Surprised by a new passcode, a glance was all it took for Claire to divulge it. Armed with her phone, I sent Rick a foreboding message before heading to confront him directly. 
The corridor to room 413 was suffused with a heavy silence, amplifying the thunderous beat of my heart as I approached. Rick's face blanched upon seeing me, his initial shock quickly turning to palpable fear as I forcefully made my presence known. His feeble attempts to maintain any semblance of dignity faltered disastrously, marking him as the coward he truly was. My warning to him was clear. Erase himself from our lives, with the promise of his wife's ignorance of his indiscretions hanging precariously in the balance. Rick's assurances of compliance were as weak as his resolve, but they sufficed for the moment. Returning to the lobby, I found Claire embroiled in a tense exchange with Sarah, neither seeming to find common ground. Directing Claire to leave, I watched her departure, her realization of the gravity of her actions etched in her tearful retreat. Sarah, maintaining a stoic composure, inquired about the outcome. Assured that my message was unequivocally delivered, I left her with well wishes, stepping out into the night, my resolve as unyielding as ever. The fallout continued upon my return home, where Claire's attempts at justification fell on deaf ears. Her deeds were irrevocable, prompting a re-evaluation of our shared path forward. In the aftermath of the storm that had engulfed my life, I faced Claire with unwavering determination, informing her of the inevitable necessity to vacate our shared home. Her compliance, tinged with visible regret, failed to sway my firm stance. The days that followed saw us existing under the same roof, yet leading disconnected lives. Claire's attempts at seduction, aimed at reigniting a flame that had long since extinguished, fell on indifferent eyes. She had become an unfamiliar entity, a shadow of the person I once cherished. My interactions with her were devoid of any semblance of hope for reconciliation. The prospect of hearing from Sarah loomed, promising more revelations. Weeks post-confrontation, a call from Sarah brought back a whirlwind of emotions. She recounted an episode mirroring my own with Rick, who, upon encountering his wife's stern visage post-encounter, was reduced to a spectacle of desperation and pleas for mercy. Sarah, embodying grace and forgiveness, opted to explore the possibility of mending their fractured bond through marriage counseling. Sarah's journey from here remains uncertain with considerations of divorce counterbalanced by a period of introspection to ensure a judicious decision. Her strength and forbearance in such trying times command my utmost respect. Meanwhile, Claire's chapter in my life has concluded, with our interactions relegated to the formalities of legal proceedings. The impending divorce, though accompanied by financial obligations, is a price I willingly pay for tranquility and self-respect. As for my own horizon, it remains open and undefined. The focus now shifts to personal growth and indulging in long-neglected passions. The gym, music, and dreams of European adventures await. This ordeal has underscored life's inherent unpredictability and the imperative of resilience. I stand today ready to embrace new beginnings, fortified by your support and the lessons learned. Until our paths cross again, I bid you farewell reminded that the facade of toughness crumbles in the face of genuine fortitude.